So the problem with blender physics is that you have a great rigid body solver, a great cloth solver, fluid, all this, but uh, none of them actually interact with each other, which means uh, you can have like, you know, fluid go around an object, but it can't actually move it. And there's a bunch of other examples where this breaks down, but um, there are a couple tricks uh, like this one that I'm gonna show you how to make, uh, where you can kind of give the illusion that stuff's interacting. So we have stuff that looks like cloth, uh, stuff that looks like soft bodies, and you can see uh, that these meshes are actually deforming this as if it was like a you know, a trampoline or something like that. Um, and, and everything reacts to everything. So uh, in this tutorial, you're gonna learn a bit of physics, uh, which is cool. I mean, the render is whatever. I mean, I just applied a material to this. That's not really the point, but uh, you can get a nice looking render out of this too. So uh, without further ado, uh, open up Blender. I'm using version uh, 2.92 alpha, which normally, I mean, almost always it doesn't matter, uh, but this time it does, okay? Uh, because we're gonna be doing some cloth simulations and we are gonna be using a pressure setting that I think was added in 2.8, uh, three or something. Uh, so make sure you're up to date is the point. Okay, uh, cool. Initiation's ready. Let's get you in the military, boys. So uh, here is gonna be our trampoline cloth uh, thing. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna subdivide it because uh, like any simulation, the more geometry we have, uh, the more we have to work with. Now, of course, we don't wanna go too high because uh, then it's gonna take forever. Uh, but something like 15 is a good balance of a lot of detail, uh, but doesn't take a lot of time to simulate, okay? Um, okay, we have a plane, we click play, nothing happens. Why? Uh, because it's not a cloth yet, you dummy. Uh, so go to physics, make it a cloth object, and now uh, it actually falls. And what's happening here is we have gravity, which is going downwards at an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second per second, uh, but that's applying uniformly everywhere, uh, which makes it so that the whole cloth falls. We don't want that. We want the boundary uh, to be pinned, okay? Um, and we're basically gonna be going through a lot of these settings in this. So uh, first of all, what setting do we use to uh, pin this? Well, uh, first of all, I'm gonna select the boundary uh, loop, uh, which is a great way to select this. If you don't wanna do that, you can literally just, you know, select it like this. Uh, but, but the boundary loop uh, method is faster. So select the boundary. We're gonna turn this into a vertex group, control G, assign to new group, uh, which you can see adds in a uh, vertex group. We can call this like rim or rimming. <laughs> um, and this is gonna be the vertex group that whenever we want to access it, we click select and now we have this, right? Um, and this is what we wanna pin. So cloth settings or physics settings, uh, go to shape because we're talking about the shape of it and we are gonna pin the rimming group, <laughs> which is great. Um, now it's gonna be kind of subtle, but the point is gravity's still working, but it's not falling. And if you're looking very closely, you can see the middle that's kind of depressing a little. Speaking of depressing, I wasn't feeling very good this morning, but now I'm feeling better. Would recommend some guided meditation if you haven't. Either way, uh, this is uh, depressing uh, in the middle. It's not very obvious because the cloth is very tight um, and it doesn't weigh a lot, okay? So to make this more visible, I'm just gonna keep playing the simulation. Uh, let's take the vertex mass. In other words, how heavy is it at each uh, ver vertex? And let's make it heavier. And you can see the heavier we make it, the bigger the, uh, there's a word for this. It's like meniscus or something. I mean, that's more for water, but you can see the heavier we make it, the more it sags in the middle, right? It's like, you know, instead of sagging with age, we sag uh, with weight, uh, which makes sense because if it's heavy, it ha even if there's a lot of tension, uh, it's gonna happen uh, that way. And you can also bring down like tension of the fabric and stuff like that to affect it. Um, so I think this should uh, affect stuff. Yeah, you can see this is a very tight trampoline, uh, whereas this is uh, less so, okay? Cool. Um, next, how do we make this thing like bounce around with uh, different objects? Well, uh, since we are doing this with a cloth simulation and the point is that it's gonna interact because we're doing a cloth simulation on a cloth simulation, even though it's gonna look like soft body or rigid body, uh, because we're doing it all in a cloth simulation, we can make it the same object. So uh, in edit mode, so again, I'm not making a new object, but in edit mode, we can add in an icosphere which is the second time I've used this recently. The reason we use an icosphere is because it doesn't have poles. It's just distributed triangles. So if we don't have poles, we're not gonna get weird simulations, okay? Uh, I feel like I'm using the icosphere more than I've ever used it before, okay? Um, okay, so here's our initial state. We play it and it passes through. Not very good. Again, gravity is being applied everywhere, but it's being pinned here. Um, so of course the ball is gonna fall. Okay, uh, but we don't have any collision is the point. So if we go to, uh, you know, cloth settings, we go to collisions, which is somewhere, collisions, and you want to enable self collision. So object collisions are for cloth on cloth or cloth on collision objects collisions. 
between different objects. Self-collisions is if we have two meshes within the same kind of object, it's gonna react. So we enable self-collision, and you can see now it's doing something. It doesn't look very hot, right? Like, you know, you, you'll, you'll probably break up with this one in a month, but it does work, okay? Cool. Um, how do we make this look uh, interesting and actually keep its form? Well, uh, because this is a cloth, we do expect it to collapse. And we could play around with tension settings and all this. But um, a great trick to actually keep it uh, spherical is we're going to make this another vertex group. So just, you know, select all these with L for linked and then Control-G to assign to a new group. So now we have uh, two groups. We have the rimming group. And let's say we have balls, rimming and balls. <laughs> um, this is what we're gonna pressurize. Um, and this is why you need a newer version of Blender because pressure settings are kind of new. So um, enable pressure in our cloth. And we wanna say, don't have pressure everywhere because right now if we were to do this, um, well, I guess it, it doesn't do what we want it to do, right? Uh, so for the vertex group, we're gonna use the balls, okay? Uh, which is gonna look like it's doing nothing because it isn't, right? Pressure is zero. Uh, just take this number and keep expanding it until you see like something happen. So you can see um, now it's kind of keeping its form a bit more. You can kind of think of this as a soft body elasticity, uh, but the bigger the pressure, the more it's gonna preserve its form. So if we like make it 300, um, it, it will still bend a little but you can see it's keeping its form. And this is actually kind of a nice way to do it. Like if we were to make it 600 or something, it's gonna look, whoa. And there's a point where you go a bit too high. I guess I should mention that. Um, but it, there, there, there comes a point where it just kind of looks rigid, uh, which isn't that interesting. So something like 300 looks uh, pretty cool. And again, uh, the pressure is only applied here. Um, so, you know, if we didn't have this, we're gonna get some weird results, right? You can see it balloons and glitches out and stuff like that. Uh, because this is a tarp that's kind of had air push up through it, okay? Uh, so make sure the vertex group is on the balls. And uh, important detail here, this is not ball singular. This is a man with multiple balls. And uh, we want that in our simulation. So uh, because we already have a vertex group assigned and the pressure and all this, uh, we can literally just select this and then shift D to duplicate those vertices. And because, you know, these vertices were already assigned, that's going to be inherited over here. What do I mean by that? I mean, if we select the balls, it's going to have all this, not just the first one, okay? Uh, which means if we now play this very quickly, we get a good looking interaction and they bounce off of each other and it looks uh, super cool. Again, if you want to change, uh, you know, the settings of this instead of like rigid body friction and all this, you mess around with these settings. Okay, so pressure, I'm pretty happy with. We can mess around with the tension. So if we were to make this high tension, we expect it to look a bit more rigid. So you can see this time the balls actually stayed on here. Whereas with 15, there's a lot more, you know, uh, build up pressure. I mean, that that's not a good way to describe it, but you can see um, there, there's a lot more bounce is the point, okay? Um, so you can mess around with these. I'm gonna make some of these smaller and bigger. And uh, an important thing is this isn't just like a visual change. Uh, this actually changes the physics because, or maybe it does it, I don't know. The, the point is, um, each of these are composed of vertices and those vertices inherit a mass. So maybe subdividing actually adds in a bit of a difference, but you can see it, it does react uh, differently. But what I am curious about, so here's our simulation. looks like that. I'm just gonna save it on the desktop, call it a uh, something ample, like not ample, something apt like available on Patreon, cause it will be. Um, I wonder if we were to take um, <clears throat> one of these and subdivide it, does that add in more mass? It does. You can see it reacts differently. Wouldn't recommend that because it doesn't look good. Uh, but you can see how you can very quickly uh, get different results. And by the way, quick tip, uh, wouldn't recommend this. A lot of people uh, don't know about this. In the cloth settings, if you hit uh, this button, there are presets. And uh, these presets are about picking these tension and compression values for certain fabrics. So something like uh, denim, uh, which is a bit of a rougher uh, cloth, you can see we have 40 and 40. Um, it should have more rigidity, as you can see. And now it's kind of looking like a tarp, um, you know, that actually just has rigid bodies on it. And I'm sure that we could have mixed different cloth simulations uh, together to have one of them be denim, one of them be cloth, etc. Uh, you can see if we go to silk, we expect there to be a lot more bendiness. And wow, I guess the pressure needs to be uh, brought down with silk. So I guess that's the case. That is some strange behavior. Either way, let's... Uh, revert this to, what was it? Was it already at 300? I don't know. Um, point is, these uh, settings uh, do exist. And I'm just gonna undo until we go back to our, I guess we can't go back. So I think these were set to 15 or something. Um, but point is, you can mess around with these, uh, get different settings. Um, how do we make it look good though? Well, first of all, we can take this shade smooth. That's gonna be an instant uh, upgrade. 
Um, another thing is you're gonna notice that these collisions, especially if I was to make all these balls a bit bigger so you know we can actually see the interaction, uh, you're gonna notice that even when they're very close together, their collision has a bit of a separation, right? Um, and you can see that even more if we smooth this out with the subdivision surface, right? They're not really touching each other, um, even though they're bending. Um, a setting that fixes this is if we go to collision settings, this is, you know, self-collision where it happens, uh, the distance is going to say where's the minimum distance where interaction can happen. Uh, the lower this is, the more real it's going to look, but also the more uh, glitchy it can become because now you're dealing with the rounding errors and stuff like this. So I'm just going to take it down to like point, well, I guess we could take what it was before and just divide it by two. So now it will be twice as close. Now this might be glitchy. Uh, but you can see generally, should give the same simulation, uh, but now they get much closer. Again, they're not touching. We can make it even better. I think we can uh, divide it by two one more time. Let's see what happens. Yeah, now you can really see they're actually touching each other. Um, although you do run into the risk of these glitches where uh, vertices kind of clamp through each other and stuff like that. And the way you fix it is you add more um, quality uh, right here, and you can see now it works uh, appropriately, and you can add more simulation steps and stuff like that, okay? Okay, so making it look good, uh, that's part of it. Shade smooth is part of it. I also recommend adding in a subdivision surface after after the cloth simulation. If you add it in before, the calculation's literally gonna use the subdivided mesh, and you can see it messes with it, so make sure it's after. Uh, so it's doing the simulation, and then it's applying uh, the smoothing, um, and then, you know, it looks pretty good. I mean, as for materials and stuff like this, I didn't go crazy, right? I uh, did this in cycles, because I wanted all this, like, ambient occlusion, realistic lighting, etc. Uh, GPU, and then uh, for the lighting, I always use an HDRI because I can't be bothered. Uh, with doing it for real with lights, what am I, a lighting technician? Nah, I'm a HDRI magician. Um, apply an HDRI and uh, make sure it's film transparent so we can actually uh, see what's going on. Although, speaking of seeing what's going on, I cannot. So there we go. Um, so yeah, th this, this is... Um, how I uh, mess around with cloth simulations, mixing around different pressures and pin groups and stuff like this. Um, I just thought it would be a, a nice little useful something. And you can use it to make a nice little colorful scene where one ball is red, one ball is green, etc. I guess let me just go over that super quickly. So I guess technically uh, this is complete. Um, if you want to create the look that I'm talking about, uh, super simple. We're going to apply a material. Actually, we're going to apply a couple materials. Uh, let's just start off with uh, three. We could have one of them be the trampoline, um, and this is the one that should be applied everywhere. Yeah, you can see it affects everything. Uh, next, we're going to have ball one, and uh, this isn't actually going to change anything when we do it, uh, but that's because we need to assign it. So and just select one of these balls, let's say this one, uh, select the material, click assign, and now you can see uh, when we re-simulate, we have a red ball. And if you want it to be like a weird little bouncy ball, you can make it very reflective and stuff like this. And it's actually looking much uh, cooler this way. I do like that. Uh, for this one, let's use ball one material and uh, instance it or kind of reference it and make a new copy so we can quickly change settings. Um, and for this one, I'm thinking we select uh, this ball and click assign material um, and we make it a different one. Like we make it a, a green or something like that. So let's re-simulate. Now, of course, uh, when you're happy with the simulation, you want to be caching it uh, so we don't have to uh, simulate every time. Caching settings are somewhere here. Yeah, you can literally cache it so you don't have to re-simulate. Nice thing about cloth is if you keep the uh, geometry low, it doesn't take uh, too much time to cache. We're going through 250 frames, and it's going to be like a 6 megabyte, 7 megabyte cache, right? Um, so now we don't have to re-simulate. We can literally mess around with the materials and get an uh, interesting uh, look. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you, you, you can take it from there. So I think I'm going to end it uh, with this tutorial now that you know uh, some stuff about physics. Actually, one more thing, one more thing. Um, after the subdivision surface, one thing that's cool is you add in a solidify modifier. It's going to give this uh, some thickness, uh, the tarp. I mean, technically, it's also going to give thickness uh, to the balls, but since it's uh, going inwards, you're not going to see any difference. Um, that, that's just a cool trick. But either way, uh, hopefully you learned something in this tutorial specifically about physics. I mean, if you learned something else, uh, maybe you were watching the wrong video. Um, what else do I got to say? That's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, what, what are these things on the right? Is it a list of uh, enemies of the state? No, it's like 670, 680 active patrons uh, that are getting blend files like this one and actually blend files that are more substantial. <laughs> Anything I've ever uploaded is on there. Uh, they get access to blend files. They get access to exclusive tutorials that I do not post. 
on either channel. Um, those, those are, uh, recently I did a very extensive deep fake tutorial. You can go check it out there. Um, additionally, Discord access, uh, behind the scenes, sometimes early access if I get ahead of schedule, uh, which hasn't been happening recently. But sometimes I record uh, multiple tutorials a day and I just keep them unlisted and I just upload uh, them one per day and then they get access to it early, earlier than that. Um, all this stuff exists on Patreon. At this point, if you're persuaded, you're persuaded. So I shouldn't uh, be talking about this anymore. There's a link in the description. Uh, but I hope you learned a thing and uh, that's it for me. See ya.